Hello Libra, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Well, your message, the, the basic point is straightforward, but then there is, of course, uh, detail and nuance. But what we come out with is teamwork. <laughs> and at the bottom of the deck, commitment. And then actually at the, I should say that's the top of the deck. The bottom of the deck is gifts. So Libra, <laughs> you are about to get involved in some teamwork. Now this might be just one other person. It could be several other people. Um, I'm mostly seeing one other person here in how the, the sort of the story talks about things, but it isn't absolutely required that it's just two people. It could be a bigger group and the relationship has many possibilities. There's no, you know, could be family, could be romantic, could be, um, at work. There are many possibilities, but you are, you are about to get involved in some teamwork. And it is, I think it's, it's a team that's going to stay together for a while, possibly, you know, I want to say forever. <laughs> Perhaps there's, there's sort of two cards that, that feel that way to me. One is this commitment card, right? The, the creation of the commitment. Um, and there's another card that's similar, but we'll get to that later. So we have the three of wands. There's an inspiration. And I kind of want to say that it's multiple. I don't, I don't know if you know these, this person or people. that are going to be part of this team. I think it varies for each of you that, that some of you uh, know this person, some of you do not. Um, I'm going to speak singularly as this person as I go, but you are welcome, of course, to substitute people in your own mind. If you know what this is and you already, you know, know who they are, perhaps. But there's some sort of inspiration happening and both of you are having it. Um, right below this is this uh, hanged man card from this sacred web tarot deck. Um, and this always feels like two, right, two individuals helping one another. So this connection is going to be established. And it's possible with, right, with this image that there is some distance of some kind involved. Um, it may be physical distance or uh, occupational distance. You know, that's a possibility that you're going to have a collaboration with somebody who's not directly in your field, right? A physicist and a biologist getting together, for example. To create something or, or there could be a, a cultural difference, but there's some sort of distance. And it's exciting, right? We have this fool card below that with something new. This is new. Um, the star is at the bottom of the deck. And I think you are both leaping for it. And then it may be, that may be part of how you come together that you, you leap for the same star and you meet there. 
that's a possibility. Because we do have this nine of fire here, this, um, right, the sense of being led somewhere by this inspiration, this idea. Um, it could also be, you know, that, that one of you puts something out there in some way, publishes something, uh, puts something online, uh, you know, you, you read a paper written by somebody and are really inspired that, by that, you see a piece of artwork or some piece of work and that leads you to this other person or leads that person to you. There is some, there is this joint spark. And then you come together. The scout of water and the scout of fire. You have uh, different and complementary skills. Uh, you may have different worldviews. You may have different methods of working. Um, you know, if it's something like artwork, uh, you know, you may be a very disciplined person, possibly, um, or somebody who does things, you know, sort of slowly over time, the way that water can wear away things. And maybe this other person is, is much more fiery. Maybe they, you know, work in a sudden rush. You know, maybe they plan and plan and plan and then they phew. Um, I once read that Michael Crichton wrote his books that way, that he would research and plan and decide until he couldn't put it off any longer and then he would just write it all down in kind of a marathon session. <laughs> so you, right, there's many different ways this sort of water and fire could play out. And then the two of wands, yeah, that the uh, that these two energies come together, and something something is created as a result. And it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. Just the embryo. It's only the start of this partnership, this team that's coming together. So we have this Wakand animal totem. Spirit familiar frequency that waits, watching for you to cite its presence. It does not walk with you, but gazes through the glare of beasts and bugs that eyeball you. When you eventually connect, it will walk with you, reach out to teach you, and then flee like the sun at dusk. This is your connection to the creatures around you and is the breath that connects to all the mystical fauna you've previously been. So this is, right, whatever this connection is, it's going to occur on multiple levels. If it is some sort of, you know, work project partnership, it will happen on multiple levels. There will be, right, there may be the, the work physical connection, um, but there's also gonna be a philosophical connection. You're going to, um, Kind of blend and merge your philosophies, your faiths, possibly. Um, below that is the leaf unfurl card, right? So something unfurling. And then at the bottom of the deck is Gar, the spear trough, right? Swear trough. 
cross spheres being symbolic of working together in united accord. This existed long before the need to put down all weapons in peace and to end all wars. The troth is to bind people together in an unbreakable bond of truth and companionship. Two voids held open and separate, yet a sole purpose uniting them. Yeah? <laughs> And then the solstice, rarefied. So the solstice is, right, it's a mystical space. Um, it is one of the times when, uh, when people would join up in marriage, right? June is the marriage month. Um, it is the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. And there's also this symbol, right? There's these two uprights that are joined. And then us, the God mouth. And what, what strikes me is these eggs. Sounds found deep in every cell call out, forcing the source of the God voice of the Earth's breath to burst and release. Each atom an unhashed cosmic egg of unmatched mystical potential. So all, so there isn't just this single thing. There are many eggs. There's many eggs. that will be created by you and this other person. And then Gare, or Jera, as you may know it. The cycle of the year, the harvest. So the, um, Right, all everything that will come out of this, there will be right. This has a kind of cornucopia shape. That there are that there will be so much that will come out of this. Right? Heimdall sounds his cornucopia horn of plenty, as our just rewards are reaped for everything honestly sown. So now we have a little bit of advice. <laughs> um, underneath this top card, we have the Nine of Swords. So all of those things that keep us up at night, wake us in the wee hours, in the hour of the wolf, when things seem darkest and most desperate. And sometimes they follow us even in right into our daylight hours. And we have this, right, the seven of wands, and it's coming out in two ways. One as this kind of defensive energy, where maybe you are very influenced by this nine of swords, so that you have a tendency to um, to be ready for battle all the time. That you assume that something is gonna go wrong. That there's gonna be some, some battle that has to be waged, some problem that needs to be solved. I mean, this doesn't have to be, you know, really kind of dire like a battle, right? It can just be that you, you have a tendency to presume there's gonna be some, some problem to be solved, some screw up that needs to be dealt with. Um, you know, maybe that you're going to be left with holding the bag. Um, and so there's a sense of defensiveness. But the other way this is coming out is as creating a boundary between you 
and right and this energy and I actually don't see you fighting I see you as in that sense as marshalling your forces right as you know rather than fighting that you that you sort of banish this or or uh, you know, make it dissolve by you know doing more of the creative stuff getting really involved in things um, going for that which you want focusing on you know the thing that you want to build and rallying people and events and and resources to help you so right this could be showing up either way for you now right below these two cards is the wheel right of things that just happen right the cycles and then below that is the lovers <laughs> choosing right the choice choosing from fear or choosing from love rather than fear The bottom of the deck has the Ace of Wands. And this is the first of several aces. So we have the journey, right? The Six of Swords. Making, right? Making the mental journey from where you have been to this new reality. Um, it could be that you've been isolated in some way, either, I kind of want to say by choice, at least partly by choice. Um, whether that's in your personal life or your professional life. Uh, it may be that, um, right, that you've just been doing stuff by yourself. You've been doing research by yourself or artwork by yourself or whatever it is. Or maybe you've literally been living by yourself. And so there's a mental journey that needs to happen from that solitary space into one of collaboration. And what's calling you is ace number two, the ace of cups. Right, both your own your own heart, your own personal grail, but also this cup that's being extended by this other person. Now, it may be that this is also happening in reverse, that you are the one extending the cup, or maybe you're both extending cups to each other. And then the Seven of Cups, opening up all kinds of possibilities that maybe neither of you had envisioned. That suddenly, suddenly there's this whole other um, reality, really. You know, you can get, um, you can get kind of small visioned in the, or, or close visioned. You know, if you, if you tend to be solitary, whether it's in your work or your life in general, where, where things can shrink a little bit, you, you can forget that all sorts of other things are happening out in the world, that there are all sorts of possibilities. Um, your own personal stuff can swell in size going from a molehill to a mountain. But this meeting up with this other person is going to suddenly open up possibilities that you didn't know. Um, you know, possibly if you, you know, had been doing research just in your particular subject and you had no idea that there was some cross-discipline stuff happening, 
or the possibilities of that and it suddenly opens everything up. You know, applying quantum mechanics to biological processes. Um, you know, or applying biological ideas to uh, what we think of as inanimate matter. So worlds opening up. And then, right, choosing, choosing the cup and choosing this really ornate, fabulous cup. Um, choosing, right, choosing the gorgeous cup. And kind of choosing that for your life in general. You know, perhaps if you have been solitary, um, you know, maybe you've tended to to choose things that were very simple. Um, you know, uh, if you've lived alone, you know that sometimes there's a tendency to you know, make very simple meals for yourself. Because you're, you know, you're the prep cook and the cook and the dishwasher. And you're, you know, you're alone. And this, you know, this doesn't apply to everybody, of course, but I think that it does happen to people. All right, you simplify things. You, you know, maybe you make do because it's just for yourself. You know, you don't buy the really, you know, beautiful wine goblet that you love it because it's just for yourself. And you're just, you know, who else is gonna see kind of an idea. But here, you are choosing this cup and you're actually, and you're not even doing it because you're, right, you're solitary in this card. You're doing it now because you are expanding. this meeting has opened something up in you, right? You're not doing this for this other person, but they have inspired you to do it for yourself. Now we have two more aces. We have the ace of arrows, the breath of life, and the ace of stones. Oh, and did I say that the Ace of Wands was at the bottom of the, this pile? I think I did, right? Yes, that was the first Ace, and then the Ace of Cups. So now we have Aces 3 and 4, the Ace of Air and the Ace of Stones, of Pentacles. So now we've had all four suits, Wands, Cups, Pentacles, and Swords. Fire, Water, earth and air showing up as new, right? All four aces. And then with this four of arrows, right? Like it, it's the wake up call. Wouldn't that be a nice wake up call if you had an alarm system that was a butterfly that came and like kissed you on the face to wake you up? And actually here, I just noticed this. We have the King of Stones. So uh, just remember him. So, so much newness. So much waking up. Then happiness. The other end of the spectrum with the 10. Uh, I think that this will move fast. Um, not that the necessarily that the thing that you make or do create will move fast, but that uh, this partnership, this creation of this team will move fast. You know, and I hope you've had that experience in your life, meeting somebody and you feel like you've known them forever. 
it's a wonderful thing when that happens. When you meet somebody and you just click into place like you've known each other forever. You know, and of course, maybe you have through many lives. Happiness, the gushing forth of so many things. And then a second king, the king of vessels, poise, um, that's really the word that wants to come out, is poise. Uh, grace. Confidence. Um, we do also have the king and queen of cups, just, you know, as a pairing. Again, not necessarily romantic, but right, as... Um, you know, perhaps as a united philosophy of life. And then the Nine of Cups with generosity. And I think you'll find that as you, right, as you come together and this whole thing opens up for you, this whole Seven of Cups, all these possibilities that you that you feel generous, right? That that it it opens something in you and you want to share with others and give to others and spread this happiness, this ten of vessels that you've found. You just want to spread it around to anybody who will take it. I've often talked about uh, my friend's idea about how we all have these bags of poo that we try to, you know, sometimes we try to give them away because we don't want to deal with them. Um, and in those cases, people are right to, you know, have a boundary and say, hey, no. But sometimes people want to give us joy. Sometimes we meet people who are just overflowing in the stuff. They've just got bags and bags of joy and happiness and light and fun and they just want to give them to everybody they meet. But not everybody is able to accept that. And perhaps in the past you've been somebody who, you know, snarled at people like that. <laughs> We're irritated by the, the joy spreaders. Because when you're, in a, when you're in a different place, it can, right, that feels very uncomfortable. But now you're going to see it from the other side. You're going to see you're going to be the joy spreader. And you're going to see that it doesn't matter whether people accept your bag of joy or not. You, you will, you know, wish them well regardless. And then the shaman. He's the magician in this deck. And Right, we've seen that all of the elements have come out in the aces. Um, we've had two knights and two kings in two different ace in two different suits. Um, and as we get into advice, this will continue. So there is uh, there is all right all of these elements coming together. Right, the magician who can use all the elements. And in this case, since he is the shaman, there is this sense of service. Uh, the shaman balances things. Um, he... Uh, I've been avoiding, if you've been watching, you know I've been avoiding this word balance because it's not that I object to the idea, right? There is something nice about being balanced, about being able to balance, uh, you know, to metaphorically stand on one leg and feel secure or to be able to walk on a wire. But in these ways, right, it's more about being, right, the shaman 
creates right relationship between the spirit world and the material world. That's one of the shaman's tasks. You know, if someone becomes ill, it may be that, right, that there's something out of right relationship. Um, it's actually, I've been having, <laughs> I've been having these, uh, references to Indiana Jones popping up. I mean, first of all, right, there's the cup in that, in the third indie movie where they go searching for the grail, right, that the cup of the carpenter is, you know, very plain. And I, right, don't choose the plain cup. I mean, in that particular case, if you happen to be in a cave uh, looking for the actual cup of Christ, then perhaps you choose the plain cup. But that in life, you do not have to choose the plain cup. And then now I'm having another one thinking about the second movie uh, where the Shiva Lingam stones are stolen from the village. And so they have drought and famine and you know their children get stolen and all of these things go wrong. And so in the retrieves, the Shiva Lingam stone and balance or, or uh, right, right relationship is returned to the village. So you, whatever this is, you know, it may have a very practical aspect. Whatever it is that the two of you are creating together, but it also has this mystical spiritual aspect of the shaman's work in the world. So what is the advice? Well, we have the nine of pentacles. And then at the bottom of the deck, there's this seven of wands. So not right. Making, making that mental move to being part of a team. Um, you know, that may be talking more in terms of we just in, you know, in your life, thinking about, um, you know, not thinking in your mind, I have to solve the problem. You know, we can solve the problem or we can, right? Thinking in terms of we, And maybe even starting this before this person shows up. But certainly once they do show up. Um, and then below that we have the moon. Embracing uncertainty. Um, also embracing your emotions. And embracing being visible, right? And she has this mask that she's taken off. So removing your mask with this person. Now under this is the King of Wands and actually also the Queen of Swords. So there's more elementals, right? We've now had you know, now that's two queens of water and air. We now have three kings that have appeared, the king of stones, the king of vessels as cups, now the king of wands. And then down here, we also have the king of pentacles and the king of swords. So all four suits of the king have come out as well. the bringing together of all elements. And here it's the coming together of these two, of earth and air. And I think that actually a little bit, it kind of doesn't matter, right? It could have been the king of fire and the king of water that came out here. It's more about just that it's two energies that are different, but that are really coming together in creative and interesting ways. And that they 
right? That that coming together will break you out of this eight of swords in the middle. So if you feel, right, if you're feeling in this eight of swords, if you or maybe this other person or you're both feeling this eight of swords energy or this kind of seven of wands defensiveness energy, this feeling trapped in some way, allow the synergy of elements. Allow the synergy of elements to help lead you out of that. And I think it may be, right, it may feel vulnerable at first, but then I think it's going to be so expanding and empowering that that, right, that bit of fear simply won't last. It'll just write this. This will be the overriding energy. Libra. Very Libra reading. <laughs> I'm excited for you. I hope that you really, right, that you really take advantage of this, that, that you and this person or people have a wonderful experience and further experiences. I wish you the very best, Libra, and I will see you next time so long.